Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you, and um, just finishing up work. <sighs> just wanted to holler at y'all today. Um, this weekend we're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars at home, which is going to be a gonna be a tough game. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm gonna do my matchup video, but uh, tomorrow's a busy day for me. I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning before I before I go. Uh, tomorrow's my my alma mater, my old college is homecoming, so I'll be there all day, um, enjoying homecoming at my, uh, at the school I graduated from, and, um, I'll be there with my old marching band people, and some of the alumni, and, um, and I'm actually DJing the, the after party tomorrow evening, so that's gonna be lit, it's gonna be off the chain, can't wait for it, but, uh, as far as our Dallas Cowboys go, you know, as we get ready to go into Jacksonville, well, as we get ready to play Jacksonville, it's funny because it seems like every week we play, it's like a former player or something is on the other opposite side of the field. And I think they got three or four of our old players and one coach, I think, as well. But I'll get into that tomorrow when I do my uh, matchups. But as far as the state of this team right now, it's ridiculous. Um... It's like a it's like a circus almost. Like I said, you got Jerry talking, saying some certain things, you got Linehan talking, Jason Garrett talking, now the players are feeling some type of way. Um I don't know what that locker room is like right now because I'm not there. You know, I could just be speculating, I could be completely wrong about it. But one thing that you don't want to do as a coach is lose the interest of your players. We've seen that happen with um, Wade Phillips, and that's why he got that's why he got ousted. And you know now he's back where he needs to be, being a defensive coordinator. But you look at what we have right now. Jason Garrett has been the coach of this team now for eight years. He's been with the team for twelve. You know, as the offensive coordinator, so he has a lot of history with this team. Jerry Jones says himself, he loves Jason Garrett. He thinks he's doing a great job. He thinks that he can do things better. Well, look at it like this. Ain't nobody perfect. Everybody can do something better. It doesn't matter what it is, how good you are at something. You can always be better. Now, whether you have the ability to be, that's here nor there. Now, I look at it like this. All I know is right now is there's a lot of blame to go around. And there's a lot of finger pointing. And I know you, you fans are fed up. I know. I know. I understand. But I look at it like this. Let's 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 just sit back and relax for a second and think rationally. Alright? Now I know some of you probably don't give a damn about that, which I understand. Because you're just ready for us to stop being me mediocre. I feel the same way. I'm tired of the mediocrity. Twenty some odd years of mediocrity. Something's got to. Something's got to change. It's got to get better. You look at Jason Garrett. Now, Jason Garrett is what I like to call a. No, he's a great coach when it comes to Monday through Saturday because he gets these guys in here. He puts his philosophy in place and he. Um, it's a rah rah guy. He lets everybody know this is what I expect from you, and he has that discipline. That's the part I like. But the problem is, we don't see that. Now, I, coaches don't owe us anything, but you look at guys like Chris Richard that's out there and in the players' faces, and this is what we're doing, and 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 you're seeing that. So it's like you're gonna be more susceptible to be like, that's a better coach because as a fan base, you're seeing that. What we don't see is what's really going on. And nobody knows unless you're actually in that locker room. Now, you can kind of speculate from body language and little small things that players are saying and things of that nature. Now, real qu well, as far as I'm just going to go into different sections of my explanations for things. Um, you look at Dak Prescott, right? Some of you guys out there hate him, which, you know... It's neither here nor there. Um, I can't I can't fault you for that because he hasn't been doing well. But we are still two and three. 
we still have a chance for redemption. It's not over yet. Um, and I'll get into that in a minute. But as far as Dak is, <laughs> everybody has been ishing on him ever since this season started. Now, I've said over and over again what I think and, and how I feel his issues are when needs to change. Again, he needs to do better at his reads. He needs to um, stop being so jumpy in the pocket because when he first got here, he was more poised. He was able to sit back and relax and find the open receiver. Now it's almost like he's jumpy. I don't know if it's because the offensive line is not there. Um, I know that Travis Frederick has a lot to do with it because Travis Frederick helped him a lot with those calls in the beginning. Um, and him not being there, it puts more onus on him. Um Again, we've seen that change ever since the Falcons game. That his jumping has happened ever since he got sacked that first six time when um Chaz Green just <laughs> when he just let Claiborne just have his way that game. But you look at Dak right now. Now, I don't know what's in his psyche, but I know one thing, that's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb player. You know what I mean? Um the stuff that Aikman says, first of all, I don't know what Aikman be smoking, but he need to just chill out with his comments because, you know, he wasn't the greatest guy either. And now he won Super Bowls. But again, that era was totally different than what we have right now. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that the only reason why Dak was successful is because he had Zeke. Well, you know, you didn't have him six games last year, and we still ended up the season nine and seven. If you watch some of his college tape, I've seen Dak Prescott play when he was at Mississippi State. If you go back and look at some of his game film from when he was at Mississippi State, you see the things that Dak was doing his rookie year here. Well, Dallas, you know what I mean. With the Cowboys, you will see some of the things he was doing there. Finding open space, running the ball himself for touchdowns, um, running running the first down, um, for the first down, wheel routes, um, play action. Now, he ran a lot of shotgun in college. I don't think that he actually hiked the ball under center a lot in college, which is another reason why he was drafted in the fourth round, because when you get to the pros, you got to you gotta take the ball under center. That's that's what you're doing. Damn now, 90% of the time is taking the ball in the center. And not saying they didn't think he could do it, but most players that um, – that 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 run their play calling out a shotgun and are not under center that that's the you know they're not looked at as as traditional quarterbacks now we know that he's a mobile guy um just people said that he can't throw the ball but we've seen him do it i'm a big i'm a big believer in if i've seen you do it once i i, I believe that you can do it again and if you've done it more than once you can really do it again now, again, for whatever reason this year, there has been some minor changes, and I don't know if those changes are the reason why Dak is struggling, but, you know, we can we can talk about it. You look at when Dez was here. Him and Dez didn't have great chemistry. He didn't know where to – he he had, hadn't figured out where to hit the ball at for Dez. You remember when Tony Romo was here, him and Dez had that chemistry, but it took a while. You know what I mean? It, it didn't happen overnight. But once uh, Romo and De uh, and um, and Des Bryant had that chemistry, he knew where to hit him. He knew where to throw the ball to, where only he can get it. Dak Prescott still had to get that with him, and Dak Prescott was so hell bent on. Okay, so this is this is our seventy million dollar man. I gotta get him the ball, and a lot of times you end up forcing him the ball. That was the whole reason why the thought process came to. Okay, well maybe Dak doesn't need. Uh, a number one receiver to think about because you, we want to make it what they said originally about Dak friendly. That was one of the things that they mentioned when they said Dak friendly. They wanted it to be an offense where he didn't have to worry about certain things. I get that, but there was ways that they could have implemented with Dez to make things better because he's still a red zone threat and he's still a threat to another team as far as double teams and matchups. Um, now you don't have that. 
And I'm not saying that these wide receivers are trash. I'm not going to ever say that. Because I've seen what Alan Hearns has done when he was with Blake Bortles. And to me, Blake Bortles is not a good quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that he's elite. And again, like, he makes a lot of mistakes. And he will throw you a lot of interceptions. So, and I look at when Dak was in his rookie year, and even last year, he didn't throw a lot of interceptions. He was good with the ball. Now, you get all these different receivers on the team and you don't have um, cohesiveness with these guys yet. And again, that takes time. Time that we don't have right now because you run right into the season. When you don't play your starters in preseason, that's what happens. They're they're rusty. They don't know what's going on. Um, Again, Alan Hearns, I've I've seen he was a 1,000-yard player. receiver when he was with Jacksonville he's done some things with them even when Blake Bortles wasn't throwing the ball right he was able to come back to it but for whatever reason in this scheme that we have going on right now it's not wide receiver friendly I don't I've never seen an offense where it's not wide receiver friendly and when I say wide receiver friendly I mean that a lot of our balls are not going and I'm not asking to go deep all the time I'm just saying like it's certain it's it's certain plays that that are dictated towards the way the defense is playing against you, and you can be able to provide mismatches, but you can't mis- mismatch when your receivers are not you you don't have the right personnel in there. I look at it like this: the way that they should have done this with these guys. If you're gonna run seven wide receivers, you're gonna just do that. You got certain guys that fit certain molds. You got your short, shifty guys with Cole Beasley and Tavon Austin. You can use those guys interchangeably in the slot. You can use them in the, you know, in the rounds. You can put them, you know, spread them out wide. Um, provide space. Those are space guys. Those are the guys that are going to kill you in space. Then you turn right back around. Alan Hearns, and I guess you could. I guess I could put Terrence Williams in there too, even though we don't know what's going on with him. So you put Alan Hearns, Terrence Williams. Um, uh, Michael Gallup, those are your workhorses. Those are the guys that you put in short slants, um, 20-yard fades, sideline throws, whatever the case may be. Um, those, those are the guys that you do that with. Then you switch it up to your faster receivers, Deontay Thompson and Bryce Butler. You take those guys and you go deep with them. You, those are the ones that you go downfield with. And you got different guys to switch it up with. Now, if you're going to do a rotation like that, if that's exactly how they're going to do it, that's what I believe that they should do. You got guys that do certain things and just figure it out. That way, Dak knows that, okay, if I have these guys doing this and doing this, and then the way that you switch it up so the defense doesn't know what you're doing, you can mix it in. You can have Tavon and Hearns, um, a three wide receivers in, um, and a running back, and then they don't know what you're going to do. You know what I mean? Or you can switch it up and you can put um, either uh, you should you could sit Tavon and Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield or Ezekiel Elliott and Cole Beasley in the backfield like they did. But they did that with Cole Beasley one time, but they didn't do anything with it. Switch it up. You have you have tight ends that can actually catch the ball. Um, you got Jeff Swain. That looks like your new consistent tight end. He's he's the the starter as far as I'm concerned, as far as tight end goes. Then you switch that up. You you put um, Rico Gathers in there. Um, let Rico play the H. Put him in there to block for a little bit and then let him spread out wide, wide. Like, start off like he's blocking. And then once that happens, he just comes out wide. Dak throws him the ball in open space. And there you go. You got wide open looks. You have to do things like that. this in the offense. So Linehan has to do a better job at, first of all, knowing his personnel and seeing what he has on this field. Because there's no way you're going to sit here and tell me that in 2016 we did this, but now all of a sudden we can't, we're can't. we stalemated. We can't do anything. And I understand there's some new players. I get that. But the difference is teams aren't supposed to figure out what we're doing right now. But you're still doing the lame duck plays. It's not going to work. You look at what Dak does when they do the hurry up offense. Uh, when they when they go no huddle and things like that, you see that Dak is better. You see that all of a sudden when they speed things up, Dak is able to go out there and do what he needs to do, and he feels more comfortable. If your quarterback is comfortable doing certain things, 
keep doing it. Now, I'm not saying you know, don't go no huddle all game. You can't do that. But what I'm saying is when you do certain things that, that Dak is comfortable with, work on that. That way, once he gets comfortable with things of that nature, it starts to develop more the other skills that you're trying to get him to have. You know what I mean? Like I said, we know that he's not a, a traditional pocket passer because, you, as you can see, when he sits and stands still, it seems like he throws the ball better when he's on the run. Same thing with Cam Newton. Cam Newton is the same way. Again, utilize the way that his talent is and and, and exploit that. Defense is not going to be able to stop that. But they're not afraid of us right now because you don't have a threat of a Des Bryant. And you got these, these guys that are unproven that haven't done anything for this team. <sighs> We have talent, and 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 I and it, it kills me because when I sit here and watch this, I'm like, come on now, y'all know y'all could do better than that. You know, Jason Garrett played for this team; he was the backup for Troy Aikman, and it it just goes back to the fact that these these um, coaches do not know how to develop a young quarterback. First of all, we knew that Tony Romo was controlling the offense; it was clear because when he left. No quarterback can do anything in this offense. Perfect example. When Tony Romo got hurt and when we had Matt Castle um, in there before Dak came, when we had Matt Castle and we had Brandon Whedon. Ain't no way you're going to tell me that Brandon Whedon was with us, what, for two seasons almost? And he couldn't win a game. But then all of a sudden we cut him. He goes to the Houston Texans and takes him to the playoffs. Come on. That scheme. That's coaching, man. That's not the player. Because these these are veteran quarterbacks. Now, I'll be honest with you. Matt Castle is not lighting it up now. He's the backup of, I think he's Matt Stafford's backup now. Or where, I think that's where he is. I don't know. But either way, that's what I'm saying. He still was able to do things. When Kyle Orton was here, before he had his issues with Tony Romo, whatever that situation was, it was really weird. But, you know, he was kind of successful. He did a little bit of things. But, again... Nobody really did much outside of Tony. John Kitna came in. John Kitna had a couple of games. I think he was like um, five for seven or something like that in games when Tony Romo wasn't there. But again, because Kitna's been here, he's been he's been a backup for Tony Romo for a little while, so he he knew how Tony Romo played, so he kind of had an understanding. But anybody else was new, so they didn't know a damn thing, and the coaching staff didn't know how to adjust. To play to that particular quarterback. And they still don't know how to do it. We're, we're wasting talent of right now of Dak. We're wasting Cooper Rush. And we're wasting Mike White. You might as well just have one quarterback on the roster. If you're going to do all that. Which you should never do mind you. Because that's just bad coaching. And we already talked about that. And I just feel like. They need to do better. They, they got to do better. We are starting to be the laughing stock. Now I want to say that. I feel like as fans, we we we've been tripping a lot lately. But you look at some other teams, we're actually not as 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 far as now. You look at like the rankings, and you know they say the Cowboys are twenty fifth, twenty sixth. We're in the bob and the barrel when it comes to offense. But you look at other teams struggling. We ain't the only ones out here struggling, y'all. But I know that you guys are looking at the Browns, and you guys are looking at Jacksonville, and and teams like that. They used to suck for years, and all of a sudden they're getting better. Well, that's because they they've sucked for a long time. And you know, when you pick high in the draft every year, you better have a squad after about a couple of years. Because if you don't, then them coaches don't need to be a coach in the league. Period. But it's just that we're just so traditional, we're so bland, we're so conservative. And I feel like Jerry, it's like, I don't want to say that Jerry don't want to win, but I'm saying that it's not going to click in his old mind because Jerry's old school. It's not going to click in his old mind unless he starts losing money. When you start taking money out of Jerry's pockets, that's when Jerry would be like, all right, all right, I'm listening. What we got to do? What we got to do to fix this? But it's almost like, it's almost like he's looking for a reason to keep Jason Garrett, not looking for a reason to get rid of him like most players, uh, owners do. You look at coaches. Coaches normally have a four or five year window. If you don't reach the big game or close to it in that time, you're gone. 
We've been eight and eight, eight and eight, nine and seven, ten and six, thirteen and three. It's 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 no it's we just we've been consistently mediocre and we've wasted so much talent because you got guys that go to other teams and do great. Look at Brandon Carr. Look at Brandon Carr over there doing well with the with the Ravens. Now, Brandon's Carr thing was we played so much zone when he was here. He's not a zone corner. He's a press man cover. They play him to his strengths at the Ravens. That's why he has interceptions this season. Look at Barry Church. We're going to see Barry Church this week coming back because he's with the Jacksonville Jaguars now. I always loved Barry Church. I, I thought he was a very solid um, um, safety that in the nickel can play almost like an extra linebacker because of how big he is. And, you know, he, he was that consistent guy. Like, granted, he wasn't great, but he was a good, solid individual and that's what you need in your safety position you you need somebody that knows that mentally that can hold it down and that's what we're lacking now but because they didn't want to give these guys these certain because you only needed actually to pay him six or seven million dollars to me that was that's not that's not that bad for a guy of his caliber and because he's a veteran get that to him you know what i mean but you know they refuse to do that now he's over there playing well but again we just we just have this level of mediocrity that's not good. And I feel like that they're setting Dak up for failure. And I know a lot of you guys that like are saying that Dak is trash. I need you guys to look more into the situation. Yes, we all know that Dak is not great. He has a lot of things he has to work on. But when I tell you that you can't compare him to to first round picks because he wasn't picked in the first round for a reason. He's a fourth round player. If you look at his report, It'll tell you the reason why, you know, first of all, he went to Mississippi State. So that and I don't know why scouts have when they look at where you went to school that they hold that against you. Because, again, look at look at Charles Haley. No offense, Mark, but, you know, to your school, but they went to, went, went to JMU like, you know, especially back then. They weren't recruiting like that out of there. I think he was the biggest thing to ever come out of JMU. But again. There's so many diamonds in the rough. You look at Will Hernandez, this now with the Giants. We wanted him. He went to UTEP. UTEP sucks. What well, they did last year. And they weren't really winning, but he was the bright spot on that team. Now, you look at sometimes, you can't really look at where a guy came from. You look at the guy's potential and what he can do. I believe that with the right scheme and with the right guy coaching him, that can do a lot of great things. But the problem is, You got Kellen Moore as his quarterback's coach, which obviously doesn't know what the hell he's doing. You got Linehan and Garrett that are just play callers so conservatively, and it's not helping for Dak. You need you need to be creative and exotic for things to work there with Dak. And because that's just the type of player he has. He's a mobile guy. He's not a stand-in-the-pocket quarterback. So, you know, you got to get him on the move. And that's the way that you kill these defenses by using him in that way. Now, I just hope that they figure this crap out because it's really ridiculous to me because it's, it's not it's not hard. <sighs> yes, I want another coach too. I want Jason out of here, but, but my whole thing is my fear is that if we actually start winning and then do something, that that's the reason that, that, that um, Jerry Jones is waiting for to keep Jason Garrett. And then we got to deal with this again with both him and Linehan. And I would never say that I want my team to lose out. I would never say that. I'm, and, and I'm still not saying it right now. You, you're not going to get me to say that. I'm too much of a Cowboy fan to tell say that my, I want my team to lose out. Mm -mm, I'm not going to say that. But just in case, if something happens, if we do lose or we don't make it to the playoffs, there's your reason. There's your reason. But this whole division right now is trash right now, so we still in it. Yes, the Eagles won. And they're three and three. They're back to five hundred. So in some mirac miraculous way that we beat the Jacksonville Jaguars this weekend, we'll also have be three and three. So um, I'm gonna try to stay positive, whatever the situation is. But I will always root for my team. But I'm just not liking what's going on inside this organization right now. It's it's a lot of it is unprofessional, and some of it just doesn't make sense. And I know that a lot of stuff that spewed out into the media. Some of it is a 
crock of bullshit because of the simple fact that, you know, Dallas Cowboys are America's team and they're always going to be in the news for something. So, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I'm done with my rant right now. I just wanted to speak on it. But again, um, like, share, comment. It's your boy E2Blue. Talk to y'all soon in my matchup video.